How's it going guys? Yes, welcome back to Maker's Muse. My name is Angus and I'm finally starting to get my stuff together here in Sydney. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about Mesh Mixer 3. Mesh Mixer is, as you would know, my most favorite 3D printing bit of software. It's designed for manipulating meshes, your STL files, and it's completely free. So now they've got Mesh Mixer 3 where they've introduced loads of awesome new features and it's come a very long way from that very obscure little bit of software many years ago. So in this video, let's do a run through of the new features in Mesh Mixer 3. Alright, so let's get started in Mesh Mixer 3. So the biggest thing about Mesh Mixer 3 that they've been talking about is support for multi-material uh, objects or easier ways to make multi-material prints using tools in Mesh Mixer. So we're going to be talking about that as well as a few other features I've been interested in such as improved Boolean unions and Boolean operations which I'm pretty keen to try out as well as a few other things I've found out. So let's start by, I don't know, trying to import some objects. So here I've got some Nautilus gears. One thing I've been really wanting in Mesh Mixer is the ability to import multiple objects at once without having to use a bit of a workaround. You still cannot hold down shift or uh, control to select multiple objects, you still have to do one by one. That's one thing I think the Autodesk guys really need to sort out quickly, uh, and it'd be quite easy as well, but for now you can only do one at a time, unless you do what I'm doing here, and go and find the files in a separate folder. Nautilus gears, and then drag them all across in one go. Very small thing, but something I think they should add in. So let's grab a bunny. So this is the standard Stanford Bunny uh, with the open bottom. Let's just uh, fix that quickly. Inspector repair. So with the multi-material printing, they're using a term called a complex. So you create a complex shape or complexes in a shape. I'm not quite sure how they're using that term to be honest. But how you do it is you create face groups. So I'm going to select and grab an area here um, and then modify create face group or control G and do the same maybe here control G and that should do it for now and then you go to edit and generate complex so you can hover over the face group that you want to um, affect so here I've got this little spot here select the edge of it, it shows you the edge of that face group and you can have various options so we can offset it for example so that's offset um, Hello. Did it actually select it? Well, that was a little bit strange. What did I just do? <laughs> what did I just do then? I'll be right back when I figure this one out. Alright, we're back. So, it's quite complicated how to do it. Essentially, you want to generate complex, double click on the face group you want to uh, turn into a complex, and then you cannot change the offset unless you then select the bounding boundary of the face group and then you can change the offset all right so that's a little bit complicated to remember but essentially what we're doing is we're making like a, a chunk out of an overall uh, STL that you can separate into another STL but it's all in in one shape so you can assign it to like a different extruder that's kind of the point of this now you can see I've got the bunny and I've got the chunk out of his side. Kind of looks like a chocolate bunny someone's taken a bite out of. So that's that feature. Seems pretty crazy. Um, I don't own any two ex dual extruder printers, but if I did, um, I'll definitely, I would be trying this out and I may be getting one soon anyway. So there's that feature. Then there's the unwrap tool. So this is something that uh, is useful if you're laser cutting or creating paper work of, that's not the right word for it, you know, where you fold up paper models into a 3D shape instead of 3D printing something. Um, I don't think it's going to work on the bunny because it's quite complicated, but yeah, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to break things. <laughs> totally doesn't work on the bunny. So let's get rid of the bunny. Okay, let's try it with a cylinder. This is pretty simple. Hopefully it works on this. Unwrap. Why not? By components. Maybe it needs face groups. Let's try adding a face group. 
again, I'm just, this is the first time I've used it, so let's try generating some face groups. There we go, face groups, accept. Now let's try unwrapping it. Hey, okay. That's still not right, though. That is still not correct. What? Okay, let's try a square. If you can't get this right, I'm going to give up on this tool. <laughs> okay, let's make some face groups for it. Yep, 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 yep. Accept. And unwrap. Right, well that's a bit more like it. That's unwrapped properly. Interesting. Um, not quite sure how to judge this tool at this stage. Um, I would... I mean, unwrapping things is exceedingly difficult. I know SolidWorks can do it only recently, and if, that's if you have like the premium version. Um, unwrapping organic shapes is difficult. I didn't think it would be able to do it, to be honest. And um, I need to play with that a bit more. But there you go. So those are the unwrapped faces, I suppose. And you're probably wondering, what's the point of unwrapping if you're just going to export as STL? Well, new Mesh Mixer version 3 has export to SVG, which then lets you select what you want to export. Um, maybe it needs some combined first. There you go. So you can export um, as an Inkscape or, SV or Illustrator SVG, and you can select... Um, let's see the, so there's a lot of polygons there. Boundaries, no boundaries, polygons, paths, no fill. Let's try that. Cube unwrapped. And I think I've got Inkscape on here. Oh, Inkscape. Inkscape. Okay, so let's go to... Um, I should probably just be able to open an SVG. And then I think it was stored under here. Actually, that's pretty cool. So, uh, what we've got there are the, the paths. So, I was expecting it to export all the polygons out as well, but I selected no fill in Mesh Mixer and it, expect, it exported just the outside. So, that's actually pretty handy. Um, you could use this to get a fairly simple shape, and if you don't have a 3D printer or you want to make it larger for something that's impractical to 3D print, you could unwrap the shape and use this to then laser cut it. I'm pretty impressed. Nice one, Mesh Mixer. So this is something that wasn't mentioned in the video, but it's something that's um, in the documentation. Is that Apparently there's been substantial improvements in Boolean operations, so that would be Boolean unions uh, and, and similar. So let's start by grabbing a, a cube, for example, and if I turn, press W to turn the um, triangles on, usually Mesh Mixer, when I did a union like this, would really damage the outline of it. So, because there's not many triangles there, what I'd do is I'd increase the amount of triangles in that region to make sure that deviation that, that occurred when it unioned wouldn't be too noticeable. So, let's separate these bad boys out. Where's my separate? Separate. I'm just blind today. So let's see what Boolean Union does now. So these two. Boolean Union. <laughs> okay, so it's not perfect. There's still some deviation happening far away from the join. Uh, huh. I can't tell if that's lots of small triangles no so that that's a bit strange is it gaps I can't tell let's just accept it okay no it wasn't gaps it was just <laughs> okay so it's not perfect it still made some of the edges um, uh, deformed and sorry not deformed uh, damaged but it's better than it was before, it's added smaller triangles in. Slight improvement. But what I used to do, instead of doing a Boolean union, is I'd do a make solid, and I found the make solid would do a better job, but it would still round corners. 
So, there's a new make solid option, which supposedly preserves sharp edges. Let's see if that works better. So I'm just going to combine these two again. Go to make solid. So you can see make solid sort of does this uh, damage on the edges, I suppose you could call it, and rounds things off. So if you go into solid type, sharp edge preserve. There is a warning saying that it takes a lot of processing power and it's very slow. So let's see what happens. I am running on a Xeon with <laughs> 6 cores and 12 threads and 24 gigs of um, memory, but it is also running two recording programs at once. That's pretty cool. That is cool. I am impressed with that. So what we've got here are crystal clean sharp, sharp edges and a really sharp boundary. That's impressive. Guys, I am super impressed with that. There's a tiny, like, you won't even notice that printing. Okay. Out of all the tools I've added in and I've, I've played with so far, um, that has to be one of the most impressive because previously to do something like this, you would need uh, a bit of software called something like iMaterialize Magics, which does a shrink wrap feature. It would still usually round things um, to a degree, and that software is not free. That software is four and a half thousand dollars Australian per year. Um, so it's actually doing, I'd say, almost if not exactly as as good a job. I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. So what else do we have? Well, they've done a few other small improvements. Um, I'm not really going to go into them. Something they haven't mentioned at all in their press release or whatever is this thing: start screencast. So I looked into it and I installed it. So Autodesk have made this bit of software called Screencast, which is a screen recording program. So I looked into using it and I've got you know, the program here. I can start recording. Uh, no, don't show it again. Whatever. Record? Recording? Ignore. Okay, so it's recording. It doesn't seem to be taking up any of my system resources. Um, and I was going to use this for this video, but then when you press stop and go to use it, you can't save it locally. You can you can only upload it. What the hell? <laughs> Why? I struggle to upload YouTube videos. Why would I instantly upload a screen recording? Unless I'm missing something here, I cannot see any way to save it locally. Let's get rid of that. There's also a few things that were incorporated in the previous versions of Mesh Mixer such as the 123D integration. Uh, clearly the screencast thing is going to be a part of that. Um, again, I'm not really, I don't do anything else with that community so that doesn't mean much to me. But yeah, that's Mesh Mixer 3. I am, I am super impressed. Guys, I'm super impressed with the Make Solid ability to preserve edges like that. That's going to change everything for me when I export things from video games. I'm going to be testing it out in the next few days on some Fallout prints. Uh, sorry, some Fallout files. And I'm going to see if I can do away with using the NetFab Cloud. Because I hate uploading stuff to that. And I'd rather do everything in Mesh Mixer. Sweet! So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video on Mesh Mixer 3. It's by far my favorite bit of software of all time in 3D printing. It's hugely powerful and I really enjoy using it. So if you've never used Mesh Mixer before, I highly recommend trying it. I've got a backlog of tutorials for various projects I've used Mesh Mixer in, and I use it all the time. And if you learn how to use it, it's a hugely powerful tool to add to your 3D printing arsenal. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, give me a like and maybe consider subscribing to make us muse to not miss any future 3D printing content. It helps me out a lot. Also, if you're shopping on Amazon, I have an Amazon affiliates code in the description below. And if you buy anything, like filament or 3D printing knickknacks, whatever, and use the code, it gives me a small kickback and I'd really, really appreciate it. So till next time, I'll see you again soon here on Makers Muse. Bye.